All right, what's up guys? So this week we're going into interfacing with Fortran code. So essentially calling Fortran code with your Julia scripts. If that all sounds cool to you, please give this video a like and subscribe. Now you can see here, I'm already in the Fortran scripts and I'm just gonna go a little into what we're working with. If you don't have a background in Fortran, I have a crash course on Fortran itself, which I'll post you'll see a post above right now <laughs> but i'm gonna just go into what this fortran code is and then we'll go into how to call these different functions and subroutines now in here you can see i have a function called dot and this is just doing the dot product i have n it's the size of this array x and this array y we're inserting it this is n array x array y and then i do this operation so i'm multiplying array x and array y together each component together and then that new array, I sum up, and that is my dot product. I have another subroutine here, which we're gonna go into the next example, but first I'm gonna show how to compile this. Okay, so you can see I have this full command here. I have it typed out just so you can see it more explicitly. If you're working with a make file, you can just insert all these flags and it'll do it all for you. But the main two flags that you need to make sure you have is shared and FPIC. This will create the mod jewel fort in my case dot so which that is the shared object and that's the library that allows julia to interact with the fortran code now if i run that it's just going to do that it's going to create the so flag and then we're going to go over to our julia scripts okay and this is our julia script and you can see i'm being a lot more explicit about everything i have this l variable this is an n64 this is three and have my two arrays float 64 inserting all the values and then have this float s and that's also five so s is going to be used for the next example but first we're working with these first three variables now the main function that you have to use for calling fortran code is called c call now there's a little bit of nomenclature to how all this works so i'm going to go into the arguments here first you can see this first tuple and there's a lot going on here now we have two underscores, module fort, which is the name of the module from Fortran, underscore, capital mod, underscore, dot. So dot is the function name. And then this, these extra underscores and mod is the nomenclature from the shared objects. This is actually going to point it towards the objects. It knows which, which one we're working with. Next, we have our float 64. This is actually what we're returning. Next is this other tuple here. And this has three arguments so i have a reference to an int 64 i have a pointer to a float 64 and a pointer to a float 64. now the pointers here are my arrays this is how you would define it and you're going to pass it by pointer and that's how julia is going to work with the fortran code and then we're just inserting what those arguments are and then we're going to print out what x is okay and now doing the includes in the bottom you can see i got 60. And if we look at our arrays above, uh, 5 times 7 is 35, 5 times 3 is 15, that's plus, plus that, that's 50, plus 5 times 2 is 10, 60. Okay, so our dot product works. The more complex version is this other example I have here. Now the subroutine itself is actually not too bad. This is just taking in n size of the array array itself and then this x is what it's doing the operation with so you can see i'm inserting all my arguments and then that array i'm taking each element multiplying by x and then adding it by x and then i'm changing each element to equal that factor now where the complexity comes in is we have to write this wrapper here the wrapper is mainly because of how we're returning array and the fortran compiler is allocating deallocating things and it kind of does all all it wants because it's trying to just optimize everything to be as fast as possible so having this wrapper now allows you to interface with your fortran code with your julia code so it's an interface for your interface now for this wrapper the main library we have to call is iso c binding which is another intrinsic library and in see i'm also calling the module for it that's the module above and then i'm making this wrapper for our specific subroutine the extra keywords here that have binds and it's calling c and then naming it equal to the subroutine name and then all my precision is now in terms of these c variables c long c double 
and then I'm just calling this subroutine. Now back in our Julia code, we are essentially doing the same thing. So first I'm just printing out the array. I'm gonna show what the array looks like. And then I'm gonna make a C call. You can see in this case, I'm not assigning it to a variable like before because I'm calling a subroutine in this case. And here you can see, I'm also not using that full jargon to actually call the function. I'm just putting the function name. Now, sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, then you need to put that full, that full name for the function call to point it correctly in the, the shared objects file. Now, because you're working with a subroutine, you don't actually return anything. So you have to put C void, and then this is the name of the arguments again. Once again, pointer is for the array, and then we have reference and reference for the other two variables. I'm passing everything, and then I'm gonna print out the array again to show how it changed. Okay, and then you can see below, we have the array, it was first 555, and now it's 30, 30, 30. I took each element, multiplied it by the factor, which in this case, our factor is S, which is five, 5 times 5 is 25, plus 5 is 30. So we, we got our thing to work. And that's pretty much it to it. Now, this is all easier said than done. Usually when you're working with Fortran code, there's a huge repository of code. And if you're getting segmentation faults, it's probably because of the wrapper. So you have to set up this wrapper. And as you can see, it's its own separate module in my case. Right? So I, I made this module. I'm just importing the library that I need. In this case, I only have one. And then I'm making wrappers for the functions that I want. So if you're working with Fortran code, you can create a module, append it to the make file, File. hopefully it compiles all together and then you can interface with that through your Julia code. Either way, I'm done babbling there. If you like what I've been doing, please give this video a like and subscribe. The Twitter and IG links are in the description. I'll be posting weekly announcements about the channel. If you have any requests, please comment in the sections below. Tweet at me at Twitter at DJ's Office Hours or email me at DJ's Officers at gmail.com. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys next week.